Hello there and welcome back to my YouTube channel, James here as ever for today's video all about how to pass your upcoming SBR ACCA exam, where I'm going to take you through where you can find all of the free resources, that's including all the past papers and reviewing some exam technique. If this is the first time you've visited my channel before, my name is James, I'm an ACCA qualified member from the UK and on my channel I help out ACCA and accounting students around the world pass your upcoming examinations. My YouTube channel is 100% student led, I dedicate all my videos to my lovely subscribers so if you'd like to become one of them feel free to hit the button below because I answer every single comment, any question you leave for me. So as ever, whew, well Master Rubric has been back again. He's already requested one video, so we're doing a second one now. And as you can see down here, Master Rubric's put, Hello James, can you provide me with tips for SBR and the PM paper? Well, we've already done videos for PM. Check them out on the channel. This is focused on SBR. I'm finding it difficult on starting practice questions. Can you suggest for me uh, materials for practicing questions, especially SBR? Thank you very much. Well, Master Rubric, do not worry, my friend. I have got you. As I said, I'm going to take you through all the free resources that I'd be using if I was in your position and if I had to sit the SBR exam today, tomorrow, next week, next month, these are the free resources that I would highly, highly recommend. As I said before, I answer every single comment, so if you've got any requests for other videos, just leave me a comment at the bottom and let me know what you think of the video as well. I respond to absolutely all of them. And whilst you're down there, as I said, make sure you subscribe so you get access to all my free materials. And finally, make sure you give the video a massive like and thumbs up so that more accounting students can see this free material. I really appreciate your support, so thank you very much in advance. So, without any further ado, make sure you're comfy, you get a pen and paper at the ready, nice drink, whatever it may be, so that you stay to the end, fully focused, and I'm going to walk and talk you through now on the main screen. So, three, and two, and one, and go! Okay then, so if you've clicked the link in the description of the video, it's going to take you directly onto ACCA's website where we have the Strategic Business Reporting actual resources for you. So as you can see on here, I'm just going to take you through all of the key elements from top to bottom as you can see on the screen. But the first one we have to look at straight away are the pass rates. So within the video, I'm on the side here, all the important information for you to get jotted down will be in the middle. And the first key thing here is 44% of students pass this exam in June 2021. Now on average, it's around about give or take 50%, but for June 2021, what it's saying there is every 100 students that sat the exam, only 44 passed it. So it's just to highlight how tough it is and we're going to be going through some exam techniques and free resources that I'd be using if I was in your shoes and you've got the SBR exam. So first of all, we're going to start with the actual getting started and the exam resources on here. So we've actually got the introduction session and first of all, make sure you watch the actual video here from ACCA. I mean, it's from ACCA themselves. They wouldn't have done it and put it together if it wasn't going to be helpful for you. But the first key resource you need to get down uh, in your notes to actually download, go away and have a read over is the SBR Essentials on One Page, a fantastic resource. And as a professional video person now <laughs> and potential chef in the future, but here's one I prepared earlier for you. And look at this. Now, what you have on here is everything about how to approach the SBR exam on one page. And always on these documents for whichever exam you're doing, you've got the overview, which is in the left hand side. So the big picture here, these are all the key areas that maybe you actually want to break up in your notes potentially so that you could actually picture, oh, I'm answering a question on judgment here or professionalism or ethics, which is always going to be tested. But it's always got a stakeholder focus, as you can see on here. But that's just a nice little breakdown as to say, well, in SBR, as in the workplace, you need to consider the point of view of investors and other stakeholders. We've then got professionalism in there and loads of different details, which will be coming on to later in the syllabus. Now, how to prepare an advice from expert tutors. Make use of ACCA resources. Well, as you can see from the number of tabs up at the top of my screen, we've got a fair few to go through. So make sure you stay to the end. These are all the ones that I'd be downloading. Plus, I'm going to explain why they're going to be important and how you can use it. The real life reading, e.g. the actual real company financial statements, 
cover the syllabus widely. It's really hard to question spot on this exam. And also, you've got to be really careful how much you're actually writing for each requirement and being specific. If you write generic answers that are just like out of the textbook and not actually applied back to the scenario, so getting used to planning and writing clear answers, you will most likely be in the one and two that will fail this exam. As you can see at the bottom, you also have the links to other supporting resources and if you hover your mouse over it you've got the direct links down there for you again we're going to be covering some of these later on in the video but it's just to make you aware when you're looking through this document making sure you've, you've utilized as many of the free resources and facilities as possible now we've got most frequently used SBR exam verbs up here so discuss explain advise make sure you get those down and there is an article about how you would actually go about actually it's um, uh, approaching if you got one of these in the exam so make sure you get that written down when we come on to the technical articles later that you actually put that in your background reading and then you've got the actual question approach on here so analyzing the requirements identifying the technical knowledge and then applying back to the scenario as you can see here make sure you jot down those key ticks don't simply regurgitate everything you can remember okay but numbers alone will not earn enough marks to pass on this exam you've got to be good at explaining what is going on in the scenario and then taking the keywords from the requirement and linking it back to that and then finally at the bottom there writing a good answer how to demonstrate professionalism so if you want to get it noted down how we've got professionalism over there in the big picture we've also seen it in how to prepare but uh, in terms of demonstrating this planning your answer so writing down some buzzwords and key terms that are going to direct your answer using uh, headings and short paragraphs so that's saying to the marker look here's three or four lines for you how many marks am I getting in that versus just writing a full page out and consider the stakeholders relevant to the content and appropriate term so uh, tone sorry I'm there so stakeholders as you can see are the key focal point but you've got to identify who are the relevant ones if employees or the actual managers are not relevant to the question then you're highly unlikely to get any marks from it so again get it written down in your notes to go away and download that resource also on here I want to highlight whilst it's on the page for resources stepping up from financial reporting now I'm going to show you in the actual syllabus later on why this is important uh, and how financial reporting that's the F7 paper or FR links into SBR within here and they've done you a really nice document as you can see on here actually embracing the change and stepping up so this document on here tells you everything about what was in the financial reporting syllabus um, that can be brought forward so maybe you've had a study break and SBR is your first one back well I'd definitely be reading these pages here three to five they're definitely going to help you settle those nerves and actually reinforce that ground knowledge that you built up within financial reporting and then you also have new technical knowledge and the actual SBR exam itself so you can go through all the different areas but this is the real key diagram here if you're really really struggling and you're thinking maybe I've had two or three years off studying then financial accounting links into financial reporting which links into you passing uh, strategic business reporting here okay and you've got everything from the actual syllabus of financial reporting and the step up so nicely broken down into all the different areas of the financial statements and then coming on here we've got one of the areas of strategic business reporting syllabus that is a that is worthy of specific mention is additional performance measures so make sure you get that written down think about it why would why would the external marker put that in there for you and then coming on to here we've actually got uh, new technical knowledge so current issues this is what we'll look at in the technical articles later on and ethics as well um, along with non-financial reporting so plenty of key aspects a really helpful PDF on there so make sure you jot it down to actually go away download this and allocate some time to really go through it and so that you understand what is expected I know what you're thinking that's only the first tab there's already so much value in this straight away on there but coming on to the second one and maybe you've actually come out of university or maybe you've had some exemptions so SBR is your first exam coming into your first ACCA exam and planning your studying there's some really good sort of step-by-step -step processes on here about getting to know your exam how we actually plan the exam if you're having to retake it what are some good approaches on there 
along with all the other videos that I record for the channel, make the most of them, but again, some more added extra areas on there that could make the difference just getting those extra one or two marks, especially if you're having to retake SVR. So make a note of that if you're retaking, planning your studying will be a very good tab on there. We now have an actual SBR computer-based examination introduction. So if you are doing the CBE, there is a really helpful video on there, along with a couple of others down here. But you've also got the CBE question practice and basic spreadsheets on here as well. So this is where maybe it could be your first CBE and it links into all of the others on here, but it nicely breaks down what you'd actually expect, how it's laid out, um, how, how it actually functions as you go through, how you actually take the toolbars and how you'd actually apply the shortcuts. So I'd definitely be looking through this, especially if you've got to do the CBE for the first time. This will be a really particularly helpful document to save you time in the exam because trust me, for SBR, the time goes very, very quickly. And as you can see on here, all the shortcuts are broken down for you. That will help you out. Um, along with the actual commonly used spreadsheet formulae. So again, take it um, in, in your notes as to say, well, if, if I need to have a look, re-look at that, or if I've never done a CBE, then you've definitely got to be having a look at that PDF on there. Now, coming on to the next area, we have the examining team guidance. So again, you've got a nice little video on there, a little five minutes, and then you've got the examiner's approach article on here. So another PDF, super, super helpful and it's all about the examiner's approach. And all of these will add up into a variety of different areas that are just gonna really settle you down for the exam because you'll hear stories online and from your, from your study buddies about how hard SBR actually is. And trust me, it is. Well, the structure of the exam is broken down for you here. So in section A, you've got a total of 50 marks where they've outlined what could come up in question one and number two. And then, oh, if we just come up on here, then section B, you've got two 25 markers, again, breaking it down on there. If you want my honest opinion about how you should actually go about the exam, have a look through all the questions first of all, and then pick out the area which you feel most confident on, because then you're going to start to build some momentum in the exam. So if you see a question two about ethics that you're quite confident on, go for that. If you see a 25 marker at the bottom and it's on a technical article you've just read, go for that, okay? Because then you're gonna get the marks in the bag and it will hopefully settle down your nerves. But as you can see on here, candidates will have to demonstrate a range of skills and abilities which include relating accounting issues to relevant concepts. So a really helpful document on there. Again, the style and content of the exam is exemplified in the uh, specimen examination. We're gonna be coming on to the specimen examination later on, but get it down in your notes that you have to be able to uh, try it and review it before your exam. So definitely have a look at that article there from the examining team. Now, we actually have self-check quizzes on here as well from the actual learning center. And again, probably another resource that maybe you've overlooked in the past, but especially if English is not your first language, I'd highly recommend that you listen and read through some of the test, along with applying some of the calculations which we'll look at later in the syllabus so that you get confident with how to calculate them, how to apply that to the CBE or the format of the exam. And then you also have some self-check quizzes on here, which I get down in your notes that I'd only be attempting those after I'd been through the study text and then maybe after I've done a couple of past papers as well, because otherwise you'll be doing some of the questions and you're going, oh my word, I don't know any of this, I'm miles away. So. It's a case of just settle your nerves down, give yourself some actual practice questions because you can be very easily thrown off within this exam. Trust me on that. So that takes us through the actual self-check quizzes and now we come on to the actual syllabus. Now, I've actually done a video on this on the channel as well, so if you want to put that down in the note, I've gone through it with a fine tooth comb on there going through all the details. So if you're starting SBR for the first time or retaking, I would highly, highly recommend going through that video. That was very requested. And you have on here um, the actual two topics, so, uh, or two, two types of paper, should I say. So you've got the international or the UK. Now, it's usual that everyone does the international paper unless for some specific reason your employer wants you to do the UK version on there. I did the equivalent international paper 
the majority of literally all students I know do the international paper unless it's a requirement from your employer. So just get that checked down, but nine times out of, well, 99 times out of 100, it's going to be uh, the international paper. And then simply click the syllabus that it relates to you. So I'm gonna click the September on uh, there 2021 as the most up-to-date one. And look at this, we've got plenty on here for them. Uh, so this is on here for the actual syllabus and study guide. And it's nicely broken down for you. Again, I've done a full video on this, but if this is your first ACCA exam, I'd really, really recommend that you go through all of them. This is the breakdown of the actual qualifications. So there's financial accounting that we looked at before. There's financial reporting. And up you go to SBR up at the top. Now, as we go down, you've got it all broken down into more details on there. Again, there is a video about explaining all of this. I'm just going to highlight some of the key areas, especially if you're going to be doing SBR. Think about if you want to do advanced audit and assurance, because some of the topics in SBR then follow on to advanced audit and assurance. And again, we've already looked at financial reporting, how those topics lead on from there. Section A and Section B broken down for you again on there. So a few more details as to what you could expect and the potential syllabus areas highlighted for you. Then you've got the actual introduction to the syllabus. But the next key thing on here are the main capabilities. Or in other words, going into the exam, you need to be able to do all of these elements on here and be able to explain them competently to the marker. These are all the potential areas that you could be tested on. And this is a nice little diagram on here to say, well, that point G there is that point G there. And you can see how it overlaps. And especially with ethics and professional principles, they come up around a lot of areas along with accounting regulation. Now, in your notes here, if you've got a printer or if you have access to it, I'd highly recommend you actually print out page 12 on here because this highlights for you all of the key areas, A to G again, and maybe you actually want to get separate folders, one for fundamental, ethical and professional principles, and then any notes you have can go into that particular folder because what can happen with SBR is you have so many notes and you go through so many articles and it could be on financial instruments, leases, income taxes, whatever it may be, and you can get really muddled up. So it's a really good way of breaking down the syllabus and managing all of your workload and uh, your time management. And then this leads on to the detailed study guide that you can see at the bottom. So just so you're crystal clear on this. So you've got part A up there, the fundamental ethical and professional principles. Then you have professional ethical behavior. And what the detailed study guide says, well, from that professional and ethical behavior, those points there for A and B, are everything that you need to know for it. So I'd recommend you to actually go through the detailed study guide, maybe after, after well, I'd say definitely when you finish the actual uh, study text and after when you've done a few past paper questions that you can read it through and say, oh, do I understand the actual revenue recognition model or the actual conceptual framework of financial reporting effectively? And if the answer is no for some of them, well, can we actually have a read through some of the technical articles or look at some past papers where they've come up before? And as you would expect in the detailed study guide, it goes into it in detail. But the key thing not to overlook is at the bottom. So this is where any changes that have actually happened to the actual module will be documented for you here. So take a look at it, especially this is really key now. If anyone here has failed in the June paper, Okay, in the June paper, well, the September paper will have these new up-to-date areas. So that's another key thing just to be aware of uh, pending when you're going to be sitting the exam on there. So that takes us through the syllabus, nice and easy on there from top to bottom. And again, make a note just to say, go through it again in your own time in a lot more detail. So that covers us off for the syllabus. And now we come on to the examinable documents on here. Again, another resource highly underused and this is where we're going to be looking at SBR for the examinable documents and as ever I've prepared one um, earlier on here so we have the examinable documents and this is really helpful if you've not done a um, financial reporting in a long time and you just want a bit of help to actually say well what was in financial reporting that I could expect in SBR and all of the IAS standards they're all in numerical order all broken down for you and it's really helpful when you analyze the answers in the past papers that you can relate it back to. Plus, there are going to be a few that weren't on financial reporting, like share-based payments, that are now included in SBR. 
So as you go through, you've got everything there from IFRS. The other key thing just to settle your nerves is that in the exam, you're not going to, you're not expected to actually remember IFRS 3 business combinations and to write it out. But what you are expected to do is to implement what that actual standard means and how it can be applied to the scenario. Now, if you actually write down IFRS 3 business co uh, combinations, that doesn't get you the mark. What I find is students who can remember it and do write it down, they have a lot more of a specific answer and they are the students who tend to get the higher marks because they apply it back to the scenario. So it's up to you whatever works best. If you actually remember them, brilliant, but it's all about the actual application to the scenario. Just a heads up on that. And as you go down, you've got all these different areas about the scope and, and what sort of levels of detail on here. Again, this is where if you've got a question on property, plant and equipment and you just wanted a bit more detail on it, well, this is the document on here for you. It's going to save you loads of time rather than having to go fish through all the study text to try and find it in there. So that's the really helpful um, actual uh, examinable documents. Again, underused tool in my eyes. Get it printed out, get it downloaded, and that is definitely going to help you on there. Coming on to it again, they actually have free support for maths and English language support. So again, if English isn't your uh, your first language, or maybe you actually struggle on some of the calculations with the CBE format, utilize some of the free resources on here. The ball's in your court. I just wanted to make you aware of it for the video that they actually have these resources on there for you. So definitely make the most of it. Completely up to you. Now, coming on to the learning and revision. So we've got on here effective learning and revision. This is going to be really helpful if you've not done an ACCA exam in a long time, or maybe you've got some exemptions and this could be your first one. So what we have on here is breaking it down to suit your situation from the planning stages, checking your understanding, and again, we'll be coming on to these technical articles, progressing into the revision stage, practicing, debriefing, where you went wrong, uh, what went right, attempting as many past papers as possible is key to passing this exam so that you've got the right exam technique uh, before your actual exam. So a really helpful little resource on there to help you out uh, no matter if you're a, a, an SBR veteran or looking at it the first time. Okay. Now we've already seen CBE before, now we have CBE preparation on here. And there are some really helpful breaking it down videos, again, everything from planning to completing your answers. So this is where if you've not had a look at or you've not attempted one of these before, I'd highly recommend this because it's going to save you time, not wasting time in the exam, um, faffing around trying to work out the format and trying to get your best answer down um, using the system. So as you can see, it includes getting familiar with the CBE functionality so so t so so true sorry and how to use it to your advantage in the exam they're even telling you on here brilliant stuff so that's the cbe preparation use it to your advantage as you can see but then you also have the actual practice platform so this is where they talked about it earlier on about the specimen exams the practice exams all you have to do is is just click there to actually log in to your acca account but i'd only be doing these specimen and practice exams after you've had a go at some of the actual past papers, but definitely after when you've completed all of the study text. The reason for this is it's, it's just going to increase your learning versus why I find quite a few students actually fail this exam is they don't have the core understanding and knowledge. All they simply do is look at the past paper, look at the exams, then read the answers. So they don't truly understand it. So make most of it on there and you've actually got some um, debriefing and actual self-marking videos. So again, the ball is in your court, that would be definitely something I would be using if I was in your position because the exam technique is so key. So coming on to the actual examiner's reports now. Now the real key thing on here is always pick the most up-to-date one uh, because otherwise you might actually have some that overlap. So you might just be reading the same thing over again because in the June 2021 paper they'll be covering exam questions from 2020 in some of their discussions. And as you can see on here, this lady's very happy. She has just passed her SBR, I'm sure. Uh, unless she's a real big fan of it, I don't know. But um, what this is really helpful in doing is actually saying to you what the answer is, but then also explaining why it is correct. What and where did, where did um, some students actually go wrong? 
So in, like on here, many candidates cut and pasted information from the question. Marks were awarded as long as sensible comments were made by candidates as to why the information was important. But the candidate must add their own comments to the cut and pasted information. But this is all about the functionality of the computer-based system that you, you can use this to your advantage, but then you've got to write uh, your own interpretation to it. So a really helpful document. It takes requirements from previous exam questions, really debriefs it for you, and then goes into a, a heck of a lot more depth on there. So as ever, the actual ball is in your court. I'd be reading this through, attempting the questions myself, and then seeing what they actually wrote in that report. And you've got everything here from uh, 10 markers, um, I've also got a video on the channel where you can actually study with me, so you can do a 10 mark at a time. So that'll be 18 minutes to complete that question. So if you want to, check it out after this video. It'll be very helpful. You have to do questions at a time, especially when you get to the strategic papers. And as you can see on here, plenty more questions for you to go through and have a go at. So those are the examiner's reports on there, and now we're getting to the Bible of SBR. What we have on here, again, you've got the international, Irish, or UK. I'm just going to keep it simple on here for international. Make a note of this on here in your notes. If I was in your shoes, I would be doing all of these. Honestly, it will be a slog, it will be time, it will be long nights, early mornings, weekends, but to be really prepared for this exam, I would be doing all of these and do them to time and then reviewing them after it as well. But let's have a quick look so that you can see on there. So I've downloaded the 2021 paper. So this is a um, classic, what does it look like on here? And you get given it uh, broken down what, what, uh, what you could be uh, shown in the initial screens of the exam. But then you've got, these are the type of questions that you get and, and you've got to pick out what is it asking for. So a calculation of goodwill as at the 1st of July, explaining fair values um, of both the consideration and net assets have been determined. So it's that and there which is the separator to say, well, we've got to answer that bit and then the net assets bit on there. So you've got some great past papers. This is the scenario on here for Peru Comb, and you've got to take the information from that and apply it back to those requirements. Same again on here, you're given some of the actual IS standards, so in this case it was financial instruments. And again, an eight marker down here for discussing the ethical issues. And there's one of the key verbs on there is discussing. But the more practice papers you do, the better. Try to avoid just simply looking through the answers. What you should do is, as I said before, attempt the questions to time, do it as if it was the real exam, then review it, go through it, and be really critical on yourself as to how many marks you would have actually allocated to yourself. That would be a good thing for you to do here. Now, that takes you through the past paper library with some uh, little bits of exam technique on there for understanding the requirements, but you've got to give yourself the time. The next key thing are, that we've seen before, the technical articles. And this is where it's broken down into the fundamentals of ethics, uh, financial reporting. And what you have on here is, say for example, you've got a question on, oof, everyone's favorite deferred tax. And then you went to yourself, oh, I didn't quite get it, what the actual difference was when the tax was due. Well, you've got an article on there relating to it, and I'd also go be looking, I'd also be looking back at my study text as well. Same for impairment of assets. There are so many on here for you, but utilize it and get it in your memory to say, look, if I didn't understand the definition and disclosure of capital, there is an article for this, and I can look back at my study text. So definitely don't overlook them. And the other key thing to get down in your, in your notes is make sure you've read all of the up-to-date articles on here because, again, these can be topical within the exam. As to say, if there was a new standard um, that was actually implemented, and look on here, you've got technical articles on multiple syllabus sections. Definitely go away, click on that, that is definitely going to help you there. But again, balls in your court, I'm just making you aware of all the free resources that I'd be using and going for, and that is definitely one of them. So, once you've taken the time to have a look through some of the actual uh, technical articles, you've then got the CBE exam technique, so this is the third time they've highlighted it for you, and you've got a nice tutor view um, video on here, so definitely have a look through that, 
But as you can see, when you actually scroll down, lots of students will miss this. The exam technique for success, and this one on here, read the mind of the SBR marker. It's that good, they had to put two parts to it, and it's that important. Plus, you've got other breakdowns on here, and don't overlook that at the bottom as well, effective time management, because so many students fail to answer all of the actual questions. So what that means is, you need 50 to pass this exam, and the reason why they have to do these effective time management documents is because instead of answering 100 marks of the paper, lots of students fall short and only answer 90, 80, 70, whatever it may be. So, in other words, if you've only answered 70 marks, you've got to get 50 of those to pass, which is so, so tight. I'm not saying it's not doable, but I'd rather answer 100 marks because I've got a better chance. But that all comes down to your time management on there. So if you have a quick look on some of the actual documents on there for you, so they were the answers. This is the one that you want to have a look at, the exam techniques for success. And what it does on here is it breaks it down into all of the key areas that you need to be aware of. Again, time management, format, content, preparation, as you can see. But the time management is such a key thing where, in other words, the, the, the external, the actual marker on here, um, it is basically saying to you, it, it's a case of so many students just run out of time, they have poor format, where, a, where an answer requires calculations, these should be clear, well laid out and easy to follow. These are techniques you need to be developing when you're actually going through past paper questions and other revision questions as well. And look, you've got other um, questions on here as to say, well, if having to talk about a standard like IS23, these are the questions you need to be asking in your head as to say, well, what is the value of this? How can it be measured? Is this giving a true and fair view? Content as well, getting into the habit of focusing on the question word within the requirement, or I refer to them in my videos as the buzzword, that trying to get those within your answer, and it, it just streams like, streamlines your answer to being more focused to what the requirement is asking for. Really good tip on that. And finally, the other actual document they highlighted was actually reading the mind of the SBR marker. Now, just look at this document, 28 pages. That's why they had to do two parts of it. But what it, what it is, uh, in a nutshell, is they've actually given you um, two questions on here by two different candidates. One candidate passes and the other candidate fails on it. So it's a, re it's a really good resource to show you the standard that you need to be working at versus the standard of someone who will fail. So as you can see on here, let me just scroll it down. So this student on here, um, for their answer, got 19 out of 30, uh, which, as we know, is a pass, because 15 would be a pass. Whereas this one on here, this student got 12 out of 30. And if you scroll down and have a look through this in your own time, it breaks it down into the other areas. So this student got 9 out of 20 for that part of the question whereas the other student got 11 out of 20. That is how fine the differences are on this exam. And then you've also got a breakdown as to say, well, what did they put as their answer? How many marks did that give? And a nice little breakdown that you might get, and I'll just show you on here, there's bound to be one, like this one here. Okay, so note 19. Look at that, two, well, one really long sentence on there. That would have taken at least a minute to write, no marks for it. Versus, look at the top one on there, took a bit longer, better laid out, but a solid two marks on there. So the two mark up there is the technique we want to be going for, and the zero down here is the one we definitely don't. And it's the same as you go through that that one sentence there, no marks, but the calculation up there was for three. So even though they got two of the points completely wrong, they still passed that element of the actual resource, on, uh, of the actual requirement, sorry, on there. So go through and hit your own time, they wouldn't have put all of this on if it wasn't such a big issue. Um, so it's, it, the ball is completely in your court. I'd be going through it myself. And again, a definite other resource that I'd be using, along with all these other downloadable PDFs and other recommendations on there for you. Whew, quite a lot of stuff. So that nicely takes us through uh, the actual CBE exam technique. And then finally at the bottom, we have the frequently asked questions. And as you can see on the screen, oh my word, there are quite a few. So I'd actually recommend that you go through these when you're going through your study text because it's just going to settle your nerves, it's going to give you lots of background information 
as to well which which part of the exam of people maybe struggled on in the past which areas are most likely to come up and then also the types of uh, other differentiations that other students have had issues with so definitely get it down as a note that when you're going through the study text take half an hour 45 minutes all you do is just click on the question and then it takes you down to it on there the short and sweet answers so it shouldn't take particularly too long for you really helpful and could make the difference of a few little marks so that takes us all the way down from the actual um, Q and A's at the bottom. But the final, final thing, which again gets overlooked by so many students, is the ethics and professional skills module. Now I have done other videos on this on the channel, but basically what it means is students who complete the ethics and professional skills module before they submit and do the SBR paper are more likely to pass. It helps you develop your ethics skills and applying your professional skills to the workplace, which in this exam you do with stakeholders and you have an ethics question. So if you haven't done that already, get it down in your notes as an action point to do after this video in your actual revision process to get that completed, get it signed off, because you also need it to, to do, uh, well, to finish ACCA overall. And also it's gonna help you with your other option papers and SVL. So definitely, definitely, please go away and do it. Don't put it off, loads of people do. It's to your advantage. The data shows us that students who do that before they do their SBR exam are more likely to pass. Which finally leads us back down to those pass rates there. Now in the video, I've given you loads and loads of different resources. I hope it's got across to you how much value you are there in them. If you have any questions or any thoughts on it, feel free to let me know in the comments as well. But let's head back onto the main screen now, because if you use all these resources, you're going to be in the 44% that are going to pass this exam. So three and two and one and go. Well, I hope you found that video helpful. I'm sure Master Rubric did, because those are the free resources that I'd be using if I had to pass my ACCA SBR exam today, tomorrow, next week, whatever it may be. If you did find the actual video helpful, which I really hope you did, make sure you give it a massive thumbs up and like below so that more ACCA students can see this free material. I really, really appreciate all your support to the channel. And if you've got any questions like Master Rubric, feel free to leave me a comment and what you thought of the video below. I answer absolutely all of them. Whilst you're down there as well, if you'd like access to all my free videos and to be notified when I upload, just hit the subscribe button and then you'll get access to all of them from my experience and my insights. Well, the final thing I can say is best of luck with your upcoming SBR exam. I know it's a really, really tricky paper, but if you utilize these free resources, it could be the difference in getting you that 50 plus, picking up on those extra marks that can just tip you over the edge and to progress with your ACCA journey. As a final, final treat, just for you, Master Rubric, what I've done for you is I've left a couple of videos at the end. If you click one of them, they are definitely going to help you pass. And as I say, could be the difference of those extra couple of marks to get you over the line. So best of luck with it. But as always on that bombshell, I'll see you next time. Cheers.